Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to look at the new Coda art markers from Cheap Joe's Art Supplies. They have come out with their own house brand of markers, and we're going to take a look at them, see some artwork that I've done with them, and compare them to other markers that are on the market these days. So first thing I want to mention is they come, if you get a set, they come in a padded bag, which is nice for, you know, keeping them from getting damaged and giving them a nice place to store. And plus it's a square bag, so you could tip it on its side for storage, which I would recommend for alcohol call markers so that you can keep both ends of the markers equally inked. So um, that would be my suggestion. The straps are not padded, but this is not very heavy, so I don't think you're going to have any issues. It's also got a carrying handle as well as a shoulder strap. It's actually a nice bag. It reminds me of a uh, of a camera bag. It's a, it's a nicer quality than some of the other ones that are just like that single layer, these have a nice, has a nice padding in it. And then on the inside, you have another um, bag that's divided. So you can, you know, break up your colors into color families or however you want to. So what I did was I did the um, yellows, reds, and uh, browns together. So it's almost like, you know, your warm colors here. I did my greens and uh, blue greens and yellow greens here. So colors that had kind of a green leaning, green leaning color. I had blues and violets here, and then I have all my grays here. So you could, you could divide it up differently. Like there are some yellow grays you could put with the yellows and some blue grays you could put with the blues or purple grays you could put with the purples and and move it differently if you wanted to but this is just the way that made sense for me or you could leave you could like kind of pack in these three and then you could leave one open for the markers you're using for a particular project so uh, you got some options there which is nice you could also put the markers you're working on a specific project out here in the in the margins so um yeah just to give you an idea now i'm not sure if this came with stickers because it was the larger set or if the smaller sets come with them too or if they were if they came with stickers because um, they were sent to me for review purposes or what, but um, I'm going to show you what we got here. We've got the Coda sticker and we've got this uh, createcheapjoes.com, which is kind of cute. I'll probably stick that on a sketchbook. And then we have a, um, we have a color swatch that came with it that I didn't see until after I'd made my own color swatch, which it's probably good because this color swatch is chaos. <laughs> um, and this actually has this little tag that was on it. It says color set of 120. Um, this is probably handy. This is probably how if you were buying it in a Cheap Joe's store, which I don't know how many there are. There's one in like Boone, North Carolina, I think. Um, and I think that's, I know that's, I don't know if there's other Cheap Joe's stores in the country, but um, like that's where they have their workshops, I believe, and, and their retail space. But um, that's probably so that when you buy in store, they can scan it. But I thought it was really cute, so I decided to keep it. It'd be nice, even a little template if you want to, you know, draw that in your sketchbook and draw it inside of it. I thought that was kind of fun. So I don't know, a little kickstart, inspiration kickstarts. I like to, I like to keep. Now, the first thing I did when I got these markers was, well, actually, the first thing I did was a piece of artwork. I'll show you that first. So the first thing I did, I was kind of just excited to use them and I was curious as to how good their color caps were. I did the, did this piece of artwork. I sat on the couch, I put a show on TV and the nice thing about this size of marker set, it's 120 which is a lot of markers but because these are kind of like the Copic size or the rounded barrel, it doesn't take up that much space. I could have this right next to me on the couch and and it was fine. And I was able to create with them without having to make a swatch first. I thought their caps were pretty close. Most colors were pretty close uh, ink wise as to what you get on the, the color chips on the end, which is hit or miss with markers. Sometimes you get ones that are pretty good, like Copics are pretty good. And then you get ones that are way off in left field and like the Artix ones are way off in left field. It's like, how did you come up with that color chip for that color? So you really need to swatch them. Um, but I was able to do this without swatching. So I thought that was that was pretty cool. We'll see more artwork later, but I just wanted to, to kind of take you, take you on a journey through my process of using these markers. So I did, I, I divided them up by grays and then by earth tones and then reds. I went by the number, the color code numbers and not their names. Each of these markers has um, a color code, a numerical, alphanumerical code on each end. And then on the, the sticker on the body, it will say um, the color code and then the name. Like this is K-A-R-V-149-B. So it will say R-V-149 on the... Um, on the color cap and then brandy rose is the color and then it's got the um the barcode there so i could not find any other markers that i had that had 
a similar color code system. So I was trying to decide if it was the same as some other marker set just for comparison purposes, but I couldn't find anything that had the same code. But anyways, I did them by color code, grouped them by color code, and that's the order that I swatched them out in and that's how I put them in the bag. Um, and I thought it had a pretty nice selection of colors. On my first impression, I was thinking there's, there's way too many grays. But, and, and not enough oranges, I was feeling like I needed, I would like more blues and more oranges. Um, so that was kind of my first impression. But as I was working and making a few artworks with it, I found I used the grays a lot. So if you don't have all those intermediary colors that you might want, you're going to rely on the grays. And because of that, I actually found, I think I found all the grays very useful. There wasn't any that I was like, ah, they shouldn't bother with these grays, they're too close to those grays. Do you, do you need this many grays? No, I don't think so. I'm glad they had a good selection of cool grays because I always use those the most, but like when I was doing icing on a cupcake you'll see in a few minutes, I was using the the purple or PG, which I assume stands for purple gray, but I don't know, um, had a different name to it. I, I used some of that and I used um, some of the yellow grays and I did find myself going to those grays because of colors that were lacking otherwise. Um, but there you can see the range. It's got a nice range of greens. Uh, it's got a pretty good range of blues, but I did struggle trying to find just the blue I needed. But again, I went over to the grays and the blue grays to kind of bridge the gap and it worked fine. So overall, I didn't find that there was anything I couldn't make with this set, which is good. And um, I'm actually leaving for an Inktober retreat at the time I'm filming this. And I thought about taking that bag because I'm, I was able to do so much with it. But then I decided I'm going to bring a bigger set because actually I'm, I'm growing to really like these. And I would feel bad if I lost any of these or used any of these up, even though they are available open stock. And I can buy a just a single marker if I need to, which is nice. Um, but I decided I was going to bring my larger art beak set because there's so many very similar colors. If I use one up, it's no big deal. Or if I want to share with somebody, no big deal. I don't have to worry about them returning back to me or not, you know. But these, I'm actually really liking this set, so it's becoming a little bit precious. But the, there you go. There's what the uh, colors look like. This is a swatch that comes with it. I like the little booklet. It looks like it might be Joe Miller's artwork there on the front. Joe Miller passed away uh, about a month ago. Uh, for, at the time of recording this, uh, maybe a little bit more, um, but that was kind of sweet to see that little illustration there, I thought. And they encourage you to create your own marker sets. So this is like, pick out your six colors you want to work together and write it down. And I think that's something we don't do enough with markers, um, just pulling out a few colors and then going on a walk or going plein air painting and just bringing those few colors and creating with just those. Like maybe have a nice variety of values in like landscape colors, but not having like every color, maybe having six or 12 colors and calling it enough. Um, I think that's something we should do more with markers so that you really learn to see the potential of the markers that you have. And then it's got a couple little spaces where you can blend your favorite colors. Now this paper is a little, it feels like a coated marker paper. Um, I didn't have, I did two coats on each of these markers and I found most of the caps to match pretty well. Some of the teals were kind of off. Some of the, um, the pinks were, were a little off, but overall I could look at my markers and I could just sitting on the couch looking at my markers, for the most part, grab what I needed. Um, but I do, I do prefer to keep this, this swatch handier because for me, this just makes more sense. I think the way their color codes are, are put together, if you kept all your YGs together and all your Gs together and your BGs together, BGs, stay alive. Um, you would have a much more useful chart. So that would be my recommendation to you. Swatch them by the color codes, like, and keep the, the alpha codes together and I think you're going to be in you're going to be in business. I don't know what the deal is with the way they arrange these colors. It's so random. All I can think of is maybe they have a maybe these are like how some of their six sets come. I don't know. It's just very random and it took me forever to fill out the swatch chart where this didn't take me any time at all. It was I just, you know, kind of grabbed them by color code and swatched them. So just, uh, you know, buckle up and get ready to fill this, this guy out because it's kind of, it's kind of weird and random and I don't know why they did it that way. But I always appreciate an included swatch card. So, uh, so there's that. That's kind of nice, I think. Um, let's take a look at these bad boys, shall we? Let's, uh, let's see. Let's take one at random. We have got an oval barrel. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and please excuse my camera shake. I think I need to tighten the, uh, tighten the stick that's attached to my ceiling. It says Coda Art Markers in metallic uh, silver and it is a white matte barrel. On the other side, we've got a silver sticker, which, uh, you know, I wouldn't peel it off because you, because if you take both of your caps off, you might not know what goes with what. Oh, that has your name, Light Sage. It's got the G30. 
uh, but you have to look at the actually YG30. KA must stand for Coda Art Marker, and then YG is a color code. YG30 is a color code. B must stand for brush. Maybe they have a chisel bullet version. I'm not sure, but the but the B must stand for brush. And what you have is a brush end here, and then you have a chisel end on the other side, very similar to um, other markers that you're gonna see. I'm just gonna bring, I'm gonna bring over my Ohuhu sketchbook so I can get a nice fresh white page. Uh, I did those with uh, the Coda markers. Um, so there we have a nice fresh, fresh page here so we can see that. Your typical, your typical nibs. Um, I actually have a page in the other book though I want to use because I made a boo-boo and I didn't put a, um, I didn't put my little protective coating thing <laughs> behind this cupcake, which I did that with the coat of markers too. I didn't put the, uh, the protective shield behind there, so I got some ghosting, so I'm just going to use that page because I don't like to waste, guys. I am really, I really dislike wasting. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We've got this brush tip. We can do some fine lines. We can do some re uh, responsive lines. This is a bit stiffer than a Copic. I'm just going to grab a Copic marker just for comparison. Uh, let's grab this guy here. It's fairly similar in color. This is uh, pea green, I think. Oh no, pale olive. Oh my gosh. should get my other glasses on. So let's compare. The chisel nib is a little bit larger on the Coda Art Markers. Oh, something I wanted to mention with the Art Coda, like if you look in the Copic cap, and I'm not recommending Copics because recently, these are older Copics, they're recent, recently they've had some issues with their caps. Um, but if you look in this cap that I happen to have this old Copic marker, it's very smooth all the way around. If you look in the Coda caps, there's a little, like a little tab or a little, um, I don't know if you can, can you see that in there? It's like a little ridge or, or ta tab or hole slot, I guess it's more of a slot on each side. And you wanna be careful when you put your nibs in that you don't catch that because I think that could damage your nib. And if I look at the edge of this one, no, this one's all right, but I think I actually damaged one of the edges of my nibs kind of pushing it in too hard and catching that little, that little sharp uh, tab or slot that's on the side. So I just wanted to, to warn you about that. So the chisel nib's a little bit bigger. The brush nib is also a smidgen larger. So this is the Coda and this is the Copic. And so if I look at the Copic, I do have a little bit softer, more flexible tip there. It just wants to spring a little bit more. On the Coda, it's got a little bit more of a, um, of a stiffer feel to it. And that's because this is a fiber nib and the Copic one is a neoprene nib. So it's not gonna have that that spongier, fle more as flexible, um, bouncy nib that a Copic does. So I just wanted to be um, really, uh, I don't know, I just wanted to be really honest with that. Now you got the chisel edge. I like to use a ch chisel edge for my um, for my finer lines a lot of times. I also like to use it for, for blocking in areas. I do that a lot. I'll kind of switch back and forth. A lot of times if I'm doing fabric, I'll use a chisel edge so I can like kind of, uh, dry brush and go crisscross and get like the, the, um, the, what is it? The warp and the weft of the, uh, of the fabric. So that's something I like to do with the chisel edge. I know a lot of people don't use the chisel ends at all. So if you're only a brush marker user and maybe you need a bullet tip, maybe this wouldn't be the, the one for you to choose. But, um, most of your markers will have like your Copic sketch. A lot of markers are kind of trying to find a marker that's going to compare the Copic sketch so they do with the brush and the chisel, I think. Now these caps do not post. So if I take this off, it's not going to fit on the other end. It's too, it's too loose. It's too shallow of a, um, of a top there. So you will have to find some place to put your caps. Same thing with Copics don't post either, but just to give you that comparison. Oh, there we go. Copic, the old Copic caps are nice and tight, nice and hard to put on there. Now the nibs uh, are more like what we see in a lot of our modern budget brush markers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the nib out of this colorless one so I don't get my hands all dirty. But if we pull the nib out, you will see 
that it is a double ended nib. So the nice thing about this is if you do wear down the brush nib, which happens, I'm sorry, I gotta zoom out a little bit, I'm moving off camera. Um, if you do wear down your nib, you can pull out the marker and stick it in the opposite way and then you'll have a fresh, a fresh point there. Now I thought it'd be also interesting to compare this to the Yohuhu nib since I have a package of them right here and see, I'm just gonna leave that in the package so I don't get them confused. Um, yeah, they look to be just about, maybe just a little smidgen longer than the Ohuhu nib, um, but they do seem to be about the same, the same guy. Actually, I will take one out because I, I'm wondering if that might be a little bit inflated because it's, uh, because it's wet. I'm going to see if an Ohuhu nib will fit in there because these are pretty inexpensive. Oh yeah, the Ohuhu nib will fit. I don't want to, I don't want to like push in there too much because I don't want to get the ink on there, but yep, the Ohuhu nibs will fit in there. They seem to be... They seem to fit exactly, actually. So I'm thinking that probably this is just a little bit plumped up from the alcohol. It does seem to be like maybe like a um, 32nd of an inch longer, maybe. But I, I would call them the same same type of nib. They feel definitely feel the same. When I'm using it, this reminds me a lot of the Ohuhu markers, but with a smaller, skinnier barrel. Barrel-wise, though, they are a little bit longer than a Copic, maybe maybe like a half an inch. So hopefully that means there's more ink in there. Um, these are very juicy, but I didn't have any spattering issues when I uncapped them. So let me just grab a, let me grab a red. Red is always notorious for spattering and let's see if it wants to spatter on us. Let's do this one. I'm gonna do it here. I don't have to worry because it's not a, um, it's not a, ah, no spattering. Great. I'll do it again. So that's something that I would have happen with oh, that red there is, I think came from the raspberry over there. It's not from this marker. Um, that's something that would happen to me a lot with the Ohuhu markers when they're brand new is that they would spatter. Yep, no spatter with that. Never, it was never with the chisel edge. It was always with the, uh, the brush, <laughs> the brush in. Let's get another one that looks juicy. Let's get that black. No spattering. Wonderful. Um, and that was something that I've run into a lot with the Ohuhu. So you, you have a nice, um, a nice flexibility with your with the brush the the stroke size you can get I found the flow to be really um, uh, really smooth I didn't it could keep up with how fast I was drawing, which is great because sometimes they can't sometimes if I'm doing a background I do have to go over it again that's not. Um, unusual, but overall I've really found these markers to be a joy to use and I like the color selection in this 100 set. So this 100 set is selling currently, and I've got the Cheap Joe's website right up on my computer, for $219.99 for a set of 120. Um, comparing that to say Ohuhu, which I find this to be a fairly comparable marker to the Ohuhu, I think the Ohuhu is more like half that price. I think it's around $100. So that's something you want to consider. The Ohuhu set would also take up more space because they have the round barrels as opposed to the oval. Um, so, you know, you've got a little bit more space that you're going to have to find, but not like, not, I don't know if that's that big of a deal. I like how compact this is to sit on the couch when I'm working. And so that's kind of why I didn't want to take this on the retreat with me because I'm like, I love having those just right next to me on the couch. Um, that, that works really well for me. So let's look at some of the artwork that I made with these. Oh, individually, these are all available open stock. The open stock price is $4.39 per marker, or if you're ordering more than 12, they're $3.65. So it would probably make sense if you're getting a larger set as you use them up, maybe write down the numbers. And then once you have more than 12 to order, order them all at once. Um, or if you're thinking about trying the markers, I mean, maybe you want to order 12 to get a better deal. Usually you get a better deal by buying a small set. Like they have a set of, um, let's see, sets of six are $23 and six cents. Oh no, I'm sorry. A set of six, I was looking at the list price. A set of six is $14.99 on Cheap Joe's. And a set of 12 is $29.99. Um, set of 48 is $89.99. So, you know, you can math it out and see what's going to be best for what you need. But um, yeah, rest assured they all are open stock. I do not see refills available at this time. I don't know if they're going to start offering refills. They reminded me quite a bit of the, um, the Artify markers that Jerry's Autorama recently came out with. 
and they do have refills, but I couldn't find a commonality in their numbering system to any other markers I have, so I could say we well, can re refill them with this ink or not. You just have to you just have to wing it, I guess, if you want to refill it with uh, with a bottled ink. You'd have to figure out what's similar from another brand, I guess. But anyway, uh, I did this with the um, with these Coda art markers, and I they layered up great. I have no qualms with them at all. I added a little mixed media on top for the front on the frosting. I did this with the Coda markers. I used some fine liner for the edges, and I used um, some white paint pen for the little highlights on there. I already showed you this guy, which um, I used a little bit of fine liner and white gel pen on that for the reflections. And this is on the sketch marker paper. This is more of like your traditional marker paper. It's like the coated, smooth, thin paper. Like if I go, and uh, maybe that, does that help you at all hearing that? Um, and you can see that I didn't put a, a sheet in there, so I did have some bleed through. So that's what kind of paper this is. It's maybe a little bit thicker than the pads of marker paper, um, but not as heavy as a Bristol. So it's, I would say it's maybe, I don't know, I don't think it's 60 pound. I would say maybe like 40 pound paper. I, I don't have the, um, I don't have the, any information on this paper. But anyway, I like it. I'm, I'm using it quite a bit and I do enjoy it. So I just wanted to, to show you that. Um, now on the Ohuhu marker pad, which is more like a cardstock, it's more of a blending card, blending paper than like a layering paper. Um, I use this, I did use some colored pencils in the shadows there. You can kind of see, I probably could have used another coat on the black. It's a little patchy looking, but um, that's not the marker's fault. That's me. You always need like three coats to get a solid black, especially in a large area. And then I did some of the uh, texturing techniques in the fabric there. Uh, very easy to use. Um, I used a handful of their grays, and I liked having the different undertones on the grays so I could warm up the uh, the steel here and there. So I did those two, and yeah, I guess that's that's what I did with those markers. So yeah, I've got five five different artworks there with those markers, and I do recommend them. I think that um, value for money though, you would probably be better off with oh hoo hoo because I think the quality of the nibs is so very similar if not identical and the ink seems very identical I find most alcohol marker inks to be about the same and the price is about half and they do have refills and open stock so um, I would say these are very similar to a hoo hoo but if you want that more more slender oval barrel these are these are these are nice 120 colors I find the set to be well curated it may be a little too many grays for you but actually just being in the in the weeds working with these i didn't want for anything so um so i recommend them i give them two thumbs up i kind of think the price might come down just because it does seem like they're a little high but you know the more and more i think about it and when i see a lot of these like kind of bigger american stores bringing out markers i've noticed that they're they're all coming in about the same price and I think part of that might be that when we buy the sets on Amazon, I think those are the factories themselves selling them. So that's why they're so much cheaper. Um, I like Cheap Joe's. I've never had a problem with anything I've ordered there in the past. Um, I want to thank them for sending these markers to review. If I had any any complaint whatsoever about this, it would just be that I, I would enjoy a couple more oranges maybe. And, um, and I would like to see the price a little bit lower but these are a brand new product they, they may just be testing the waters and maybe they'll be bringing the price down a little bit lower but as far as a gift um and my other qualm would be i, I was kind of hoping for that price if they had neoprene brush nibs actually i would rather they keep the price where they are but instead of the fiber brush nibs they used a neoprene brush nib like copic or like blick studio art markers use because blick studio art markers i'll show you one of those they are um they are about the same size. They might be a little bit shorter. They're a little bit shorter. Um, they have the neoprene brush nib and the price is about the same. So you get that more flexible nib um, at the same price point. So if they could do that, that would be the only, that would be the only suggestion I would have is just either drop the right price a little bit or give us the neoprene nib versus a, um, versus the fiber nib. They, they said it's a Japanese nib on the website, so I was expecting more of a, more of that rubbery, spongy, flexible nib. But, um, but overall, I think, I think they're, I think they're nice. I think that they are um, a good value, especially compared to Copics. And I've really enjoyed using them. So there, hopefully this has given you enough information so you can make a informed decisions on these. I'm happy with all the artwork I created with it. I didn't have any problems with ink bleeding more than others or turning weird colors. Of course, they're just pretty new. That tends to happen over time. Um, 
Uh, I thought the caps, they did a great job at making the caps match the ink. They're not perfect, but they are better than any of the other budget markers I've used as far as cap to ink matching. And they're a nice set. I like the bag. I like everything about them. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll put a link to Cheap Joe's in the video description. It'll take you right to the code and marker page, and then you can click on any of the sets and look at them a little bit closer and see if they are right for you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy my in-depth tutorials. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!